live yet? Hello, class. <laughs> I absolutely love that. <laughs> hey, good morning, everybody. How are you? Um, we've been a little busy down here in Alabama. And so, to be quite frank, this is the sixth month we've done a free newbie training class. We think they've been extremely extremely successful. We've helped a lot of people with over 100,000 views on our just these lives that we do on the last Saturday of every month. Do you think it's 100,000 people or just the same poor souls that keep watching our <laughs> classes? Not so sure. <laughs> Not so sure. But we've gotten a lot of great feedback. You guys have liked these. We announced doing these six months ago. And we told you that at the end of every, uh, the last Saturday of every month, we would do a live and we would um, kind of help newbies, you know, um, navigate their way through, um, you know, the, the RV lifestyle. And so we've we've done our best. We hope that you, I hope, we hope that they've been helpful. We, we think the feedback we've gotten so far is they've been very helpful. And we're actually considering just going ahead and keep doing these. Um, as you know, we are at a campground, Thunder Canyon, down in um, Ida, Alabama. The owners are kind of jerks. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And everything is going well. We've got our hands full down here, um, but uh, we're so grateful for our lives. We're, we are so blessed. And uh, we decided that because we didn't prepare anything for today that we would do a QA. and a No, don't say that we decided because we didn't prepare anything. No, the reason we're doing the Q&A format is because we want to connect with you guys and know where to take this RV newbie class, okay? This was only supposed to be a six month endeavor. So in the chat or in the comments, I want your honest feedback. Should we continue? Should we make this an ongoing thing? Number one. Number two, by making it a Q&A format, it's going to become really clear what your questions are and what other classes we should work on. Because what we're doing is we really believe that RV education should be free. Yeah that the cost of not having education, the cost of not knowing the safety stuff is way too high and everybody should just have access to it. Right. But sometimes it's hard to figure out, well, how do I relay what I think somebody should know in a way that's actually interesting or even better yet, what's the biggest question that, that our people are struggling with? What's the biggest thing that if we made a video on or that if we dove deep into that it could help the most. Right. Like what's your biggest struggle? What's your biggest obstacle? What's the biggest thing that if you could pick our brain for 20 minutes, what questions would you ask? So if you can pick our brain for an hour, hour and a half, what questions would you ask? And some of you have given questions already, Yes. which we're gonna go through. We're gonna do our best to go through all the questions, questions in caps, is really important to us because the chat can go really fast and we lose we can lose it really quickly. If you want to post your question a couple times, if if we're taking too long, we won't get offended. Um, but our goal is to get a sense of what you want and connect because you guys are really helping us navigate and and really leading the way. Exactly. So you guys know there's a lot of too many people in this space make the RV life look like it's all rainbows and butterflies. And it is not. It's just a different type of lifestyle. Mercedes and I promised you two and a half years ago that we were going to share all of it, the good, the bad and the ugly. And we feel that's exactly what we've done. Um, we can't believe the size of our community at this point. The RV Odd Squad is now 20,000 plus strong with more than a thousand members supporting us monetarily. Um, we set out by us with a simple prayer. We said, God, guide and direct us that we may help as many of your other kids as we possibly can. And to always tell the truth, whether it's embarrassing or not. And that's what we've done. And we think that that's why this community has grown so, so fast. Um, we, we really believe we're the most blessed couple on the face of the planet. And, um, we couldn't be, we wouldn't be here with you, which is why we work so hard. This isn't just our success. We want the entire community to benefit from the growth that we've had with everything. And that's why we launched our, um, our products last week. Um, all that money is going towards building the RV Odd Squad and um, getting Thunder Canyon open. And so far, everything's going great. Um, right now, it looks like the Palooza will be here in um, Thunder Canyon on the same dates. I believe it would be October 4th. Um, and we are in close contact with all those people 
that got screwed over by that campground that tossed us because they could make more money by tossing us. And so a lot of those people, um, as you guys know, they are finding an RV space right now is tough. And a lot of those people have a big hole in their schedule. We're about six hours northeast of where New Orleans is. And so we're going to make it a great time for all of you. All right. You ready to start some questions? Let's do some questions. Um, I'm going to jump to this one. John's blue shirt, <laughs> LOL. Um, you know, uh, you are who you spend time with, right? You are the culmination of the top five people you spend time with. And uh, this whole experience being in Alabama. Um, we love it. Yeah. And they're, uh, John's really a... Uh, deep diving into the the country lifestyle i love it and uh it's it's pretty funny so you, you guys are going to have a front row seat of watching us evolve <laughs> from city folk to hopefully halfway decent country country folk, folk yeah <laughs> yeah i was born in the north but i got as i got to the south as fast as i possibly could we love southern people we yeah. love southern hospitality um we love all of it we feel like we're at home here yeah um and uh and today i decided to represent yeah you know here you're either going to be uh you know auburn, alabama yeah. right roll tide or auburn and so right now it looks like mercedes is leaning towards auburn we'll i need see. to i need to investigate more i can't just <laughs> blindly pledge my allegiance i need to learn more about the teams um, and, and John is embracing his inner Yankee, which I think is important. <laughs> I am not a Yankee, babe. Stop doing that. Okay. And then, so let's go with some questions that um, part of the, we're, we're experimenting with this texting app that's allowing us to kind of connect with people. Yeah. And a lot of people gave some questions on the texting yeah, app. Yeah. So, so all of you have joined us in the founders level or the advisory board level. Um, now you have direct access to me and Mercedes, which we absolutely love. It's scalable, right? Yeah. John loves the texting. I love it. He, yeah. It, yeah. It's it, easier. You don't have to talk to people yeah, but, on the phone. And so, you know, we get to talk to these people and, um, we asked this morning if they had any questions. Thank you all of you for your support and the vision of not only the RV odd squad, what we're trying to do, which is build camping around principles and like-minded people. And then of course, Thunder Canyon, the people that book two weeks in advance, um, so these are the questions we got from them. Let's see. Does any, does anyone have a question? Oh, that's wait. I'm, I'm yeah. reading my own question. Hold yeah. on a second. You guys. You're, you're, okay. Okay. That's not it. So while John does that, I'll look at some of the other questions. <laughs> Let's see. Where'd they all go? I don't know, sweetheart. Oh, here we go. I got one. I got two. Jimmy Briggs. Okay. When you open the camp, will there be a discounted nightly rate for founders and advisors different than that rate for the RV Odd Squad? All RV Odd Squad members will receive a discount at Thunder Canyon. Yeah. Um, all of them. And it'll be a pretty big discount just depending on, you know, how you support us. That's all. And the second question that Jim had was for people that want to rent lots longer than a week, um, stay a month or maybe six months to a year, will there be a discounted rate like maybe half the monthly rate? We don't know yet. Um, you know, of course, we want to support RV Odd Squad members who are traveling nurses. There's yeah. people that live this lifestyle, and we want to support them the best we can. A lot of military, yeah. retired military. Phase one is going to be about 15 lot, fifteen sites, full 50-amp sites. Phase two is going to add another between 21 and 38 sites. And so we'll scale this up. Um, we do want to just make a quick comment. On, we've gotten a lot of hate mail of people saying we've loved you and we've followed you for so long. We can't believe that you're going to make this unaffordable for everybody. Thunder Canyon is going to be a place for everybody. Mm -hmm. um, we've got enough acreage here to have beautiful, wide open lots that sit on about a half acre. We also have room to put in lots that are a little bit tighter to each other and the price will be lower. We plan on doing a lot of boondocking sites um, that are very private and alone. Mercedes is tapping my leg because I'm talking too long. Well, so. I'd like to say something too. Please do. Okay. So one of the beauties about having the acreage is that you can have different types of camping. Some people are going to want more primitive style camping. Some people are fine with the typical lot style camping. Some people are going to want to stay here a long time. Other people are just going to want to stay here two, three nights. They want to get in and out easy. And so one of the things that we're doing is putting this into bite-sized chunks. Our goals here, um, you know, the camping industry has gone so crazy expensive. And our goal is not to be crazy expensive. Our goal is really to cater to different people's needs. And we're going to have to do that chunk by chunk, phase by phase. Yeah. So the first thing that we have to do is really 
use what's existing and make that fully operational. And then we can build up more based on, based on where things are headed. And the other piece that's so important is that as we talk to more and more people and get a sense of what kind of camping do you want to do here? There's very different styles of camping. There's rest stop camping that's like right along the highway and you just need someplace flat to, to connect and then go leave the next day. And then there's a destination camping where you want to stay at the place for a while. Those are very different needs. And so that's what we're trying to figure as we determine our phases. Yeah, exactly. Um, the next question we have is from uh, Rodney and Andrea. Um, what is your biggest obstacle right now? And what do you foresee to be your biggest obstacle one month from now and even two months from now? Right now, it's just time. Um, we don't have enough time in the day to keep up with everything. You guys, a lot of you may not realize this, but we've received over 5,000 emails in a three-week period. We were completely overwhelmed. We still have not caught up. We do the best we can. Um, one of the things that we really struggled with was we didn't know who was RV Oswald members and who weren't. And so... Um, we're working, we're, we're working on catching up, but right now it's just having enough time to get everything done that we, that we, that we need to get done on a daily basis. And there's yeah. a lot to do. Yeah. I think that it's also the feelings of overwhelm can be pretty crazy because there's so much to do and it's so easy to just have analysis, uh, paralysis via analysis, like thinking in the big picture. And so ever reminding ourselves to take little breaks throughout the day to just focus on what's the most urgent at this time and uh, to not forget to have fun with it all. But real, really, I've been struggling a lot because I feel like my life is like I'm just constantly in the RV and I don't get to go out much. And when I do get to go out, it's like to the grocery store to do laundry. So I need to get the heck out of here. <laughs> okay, can we fix it we'll after? fix it after it? Okay, okay. good. Um, the next question comes from Jeffrey McQuarrie. I call him Doc. He's a doctor. Um, you have a very rigorous schedule between videos and classes. How are you finding time for grant camp gratitude and time to keep your relationship together? Keep the love going. We all see it. And I think that's the key to it, guys. We love our lives. Um, this It looks to you like this is a lot of work, and it is. Um, but we trust that if we do the next thing in front of us, we get it all done. Um, like Mercedes, I get a little overwhelmed too. It's kind of up and down, right? We have our good days and our bad days. But when you love what you're doing, it doesn't feel like work. Um, this whole thing is a passion to serve the RV Odd Squad members as best we can. And I guess my answer would be a little different because I think at any given time, one of us is in freak out mode. But fortunately, we have not both been in freak out mode at the same time. <laughs> yeah. So sometimes he has to carry me a little bit and sometimes I have to carry him a little bit. So um whoever's stronger at the moment is probably the one making like more of the decisions yep. it just really depends um because like this morning i'm like i need a break i want to i can't i can't and he's like you got this baby you got yeah. this and then tomorrow or oh that's the one thing too sundays like really being strict about enjoying sundays and taking that time off has been helping a lot too yeah we do need to take some time off yep we do um donnie thomas um another one of our advisor members asks um what do you do during severe weather uh, you curl in the fetal position <laughs> <laughs> um the truth is is that here in alabama well in RVing in general we yeah. love to sleep when there's kind of nasty weather outside it's yeah. almost like meditative to me when that rain heavy rain hits the top uh of the rv roof yeah. and so i love sleeping in it but while you, uh, there's so many apps that you can download on your phone, we use AccuWeather. We always keep a close eye on the uh, weather. The other reason why we're super blessed is we have you guys. And it's constantly, you know, we'll get an email or we'll get a, a text notification saying, hey, guys, watch out. There's some nasty weather. We got a text last night. Well, we, we went to church last night um, for this really cool thing that Sage had a blast with. Um, and then a couple of our people texted us while we are at church saying, hey, be careful. There's going to be rough weather, you know, last night. And there was. Yeah. Um, but just pay attention to what's going on around you and have something on your on your phone or your app that you can watch the weather. Yeah, at least knowing that the storm's going to come helps a lot. Yep. All right. I have a couple questions, too. Um, from overtaxed in what state is MN? Minnesota? Yes. Overtaxed in Minnesota, Minnesota says John's blue shirt. Oh, no, we we answered that one already. Yep. OK, uh, Rowan, uh, Renee says, what's the best way to get the sensors clean? where it will show the right indicator. This is a hard one in the tanks. Yeah. Because um, 
we have yet to find sensors that we can 100 percent rely on yeah and this is um this is the case across the industry um rv tank sensors are they're just they don't work most of the time and uh it doesn't matter what type of rig you have usually the rv sensors they don't work on and off there are cleaners that you can use you want to keep your tanks clean as clean as you possibly can there are chemicals both organic and you know um chemicals that will clean your tank um but it's always been a battle for me we, we're in our third rig now and um the sensors always go go batty on us every now and then so the best i could tell you is just try to um keep your tanks as clean as you possibly can yeah that's a hard one i hear that laser sensors might do better but i think it just really you know i don't i don't have experience with those kinds of right. sensors yep. so that's just one that I think we're always going to perpetually struggle with. <laughs> the best way to keep your blood, uh, this is the Homestead News, how to keep, how to clean the black water tank. Can you use Lysol, Lysol concentrate. concentrate, the brown bottle? I've never heard of that one, Kevin. Um, um, but I can tell you that uh, what I do is I don't use a lot of chemicals in my tanks. I make sure my black tank is completely full before I dump it. Um, and then it's very, very important to keep water in that tank. Plenty of water is what keeps a black tank healthy. It's when you're low on water in that tank that you'll start to get paramenting and going up. Yep. Um, we have tried, um, this This helps clean sensors too, to take five or 10 pounds of ice right before you move and put that down the toilet, put a little water in there, and as you drive, it'll flush that ice around and kind of clean the walls of the inside of your tank. Sometimes that will help clean your sensors. But the best thing I tell you is just pay attention to your tanks. You get better and better as you RV. Um, now it's just, it's second nature to me now. The black tank doesn't even bother me anymore. Yeah. Um, we had a question on solar. We're going to have to get back to you on solar because we don't have enough experience with it. We rented that van that had uh, solar panels. Yep. And that was kind of nice having the battery kind of recharge itself. Yep. Um, but but really. We will be doing a solar series. Um, yeah, we've had someone help us. Yeah, we just, we don't talk about things we haven't experienced yet. Um, we will do a whole series on solar and share all that with you guys when the time comes. Another really good one. Where's the, this is from tap on this 6969. Where's the best place and the worst place you've ever stayed? Which one do you think is the best place and the worst place you've ever stayed? Um, I think the best place we've ever stayed, this is the truth guys. Um, before we got to Alabama, I would have had to say it was Yosemite at a thousand trails parked. What was the name of it? Oh, Yosemite Lakes. Yosemite Lakes, um, just about five miles from the entrance of Yosemite National Park. You guys, a lot of you know that we got stuck there for three months because a bird built a nest in the back of our RV, and we couldn't move once they laid eggs, so we had to stay there. But that was a beautiful park. The most beautiful park, and I'm not kidding you, that I've ever stayed in is the park we're in right now. Um, we really believe that this is a gift. And when Mercedes and I got here and we started looking around this place, we were blown away that somebody didn't make this a national park or a state park. The beauty in the canyon is so overwhelmingly beautiful um, and gorgeous and changing every day that, that we love it here. The other piece I'm sure that has made a difference for us is we're the only people here with usually one or two other friends of ours that just for security purposes, right? We don't want to be on 226 acres by ourselves you know people know where we are now um so i think it's probably because this is the most room we've ever had um yeah and i'd say that one of the worst parks we ever camped at was the ones that are super super tight these corporations are stacking these rigs they're parking lots with full hookups they're monetizing parking lots they've monetized park parking lots guys and it was actually on our way here and we're not going to name the name of the campground, but it was probably about an acre and it had like a hundred sites on it. It was absolutely ridiculous. And here's the irony is that we've been to some parks that maybe on the outside, they look a little run down. They look like your stereotypical, you know, trailer park and, and that kind of thing. But the people there have been absolutely amazing. And yes. then we've been to some parks that are like uber fancy, right on the water, a couple hundred dollars a night. And they've been so stuck up. Like, they want your dog to pee, like, within this place, but not six inches to this little sign that nobody's walking on. It's just because they want your dogs to pee in a two-by-two two square. And so I feel like it really, it, 
uh, the people have a lot to do with it. You can't judge by the price point necessarily. I also feel like your own attitude has a lot to do with it. If yeah. you're in a bad headspace, it doesn't matter if Where you are camping. in the Taj Mahal of RV parks. You're still going to have an issue. Yep. Wherever you go, you go with you guys. Exactly. Um, thank you to – who's that? That's Dawn. See, I knew it. Beauty and the Geezer. Cute couple. Oh. Thanks, Donnie. Dawn's yeah. been a supporter of us for years, ever since we started out. We really appreciate it, Dawn. Yeah. All right. We have a couple of really good questions okay. if we scroll down to new comments. Okay. Um, Why don't I just let you control it? Because you're tapping me and hitting me. And... I'm not hitting you that much. Yeah, you are. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm really not. Run All the right. show. Run the show. Can board members use their two weeks during the October gathering? Well, we have a duty first to the people that were displaced. Yep. Um, depending on moving everyone that was displaced, that's our first priority. From there, then we can determine if we have spots open. We're also looking at um, different needs. Like some people really are going to need hookups where other people are like, hey, I'm self-contained. So at, at the moment, we're just keeping it for the people that were displaced um, in the New Orleans event. But if we can open it, we're certainly going to do that. Um, it's just going to be really tricky because we're it depends how much we can finish of the first few phases um within what time frame yeah um but we, we have a lot of places here to boondock you guys and we have dumps dumps are already in place we have water we have electricity we just only have a certain amount of full hookups so if you had booked to meet to see us in new orleans um you're going to get first shot yeah. once we figure it out um yeah. and you know just for full disclosure that event was all inclusive for a week. This had never been tried before. And this company reached out to us um, and they asked us if we'd be willing to do it. We saw the price tag on and said, oh my God, I'd be surprised if we got a half a dozen people. That's really expensive. But when you looked into it at $3,100, it included everything. Lunch, uh, breakfast, lunch, dinner, all these different getaways, going out in the steamboat and having lunch at different restaurants. All of it was inclusive and included. And we were paid $175 for each person. So it wasn't about money for us. We just saw it as an opportunity to be able to meet with the RV Odd Squad and play with you guys and have somebody else take care of all the details. Right now, we're trying to get that company to come up here. Obviously, we're negotiating the best price we can. And whatever those costs are going to be, we're just going to split it with the people that come. There's going to be no profit in that outside of you know your campsite. Yeah. Well, and here's the crux, everyone, is that we have two hands. We each have 24 hours in a day. And so let's say we have four hands on this. We need more hands. And I don't just mean like the whole joke about like bring your chainsaws kind of thing. It's more like, you know, we, we need help. We need help from people that, uh, that have this kind of technology prowess um, so that we can focus on the things that we need to be focusing on. And I'm not entirely in the event business. So I, it would be a disservice for me to dive into that because yeah. I'd be neglecting something else. Yeah, but remember, guys, we did our first Palooza during the panorama, right, in Florida. And we had an absolute blast, absolute blast that weekend. I think we charged $199 for that whole event. We actually lost money. We bought everybody shirts. We bought pizza. We, we put on a dance. We brought on a DJ. We had a blast. That, that weekend, that Palooza changed us. Yeah. It literally changed us that weekend. We fell in love with the RV Odd Squad, our people. Well, we and since that time, I mean, yeah, of course we loved him, but, but it this, was, it was, it's a deeper. weird thing when you guys know us, you know, everything about us. Cause we were pretty authentic about what we share everything, but we don't know who you are. Yeah. And, and the, when we finally get to meet people and give you guys a hug it was, and hang out, break bread, you yes. know, um, dance, all that stuff. It, it was something really special and Sage, it was like our family. Yes. That's why we called you guys our family on the road. Exactly. And then one more thing I'm going to add, because I said time was our biggest problem. I think I think there's a bigger problem than that. We need help. We need help really, really bad. Mercedes and I can't do this by ourselves anymore. And that's one of the things we're most excited about uh, the RV Odd Squad memberships is we're starting to get to know people that have special talents that can help support the growth of the group. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, hopefully we'll be able to, to scale that in such a way that we because we just can't. We can't get any bigger than we then we can't get any bigger without getting more help mm -hmm. not only you know the help from the rv odd squad members that are free but also we're looking to start hiring people yeah and we'd we rather hire we need a team we need a team to do this we think we've set a, a solid foundation to build a, a great community mm -hmm. right and actually make a difference in the world based on principles we've laid it out to you if you watch our channel you know where we're heading with this thing 
Um, it's never been about money for us. Never. Um, God gives us everything we need and everything else in the past year has gone right back into building the community, you know, um, and, uh, and that's what we want to do. So, uh, Erica 65 says, I keep hearing about happy camper. Is it any good? Um, I hear it. I, I have heard, I've never heard anybody complain about happy camper, but we don't have any experience with happy. We've camper. never tried it. Yeah. But I've never seen a bad thing said about happy camper and I think it works. I yeah. just haven't used it. All right. Um, thank you, Sonny, for the super sticker. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Sonny. Appreciate that. We don't um, we don't expect them. We try to answer everyone's questions, but we definitely appreciate them. Um, this is a great question, John. I have a shop full of tools. Can I come out? Um, <laughs> let's wait till we. Because that's the other thing is that you know how like you think, oh, I'll just hire some help and then everything will be fixed. No, we need to take our time. And making sure that we have the right people on our team that understand our insanity and <laughs> that uh and then we have to have time to like train people right so right. you don't just like bring someone on and assume that they can just read your mind right. <laughs> so um hold off on that but yeah we do have we're gonna have a bring your chainsaw <laughs> yeah just remember guys we had more than five thousand people reach out for help or that wanted to get involved with this we haven't even gotten to 10 percent of that total list because we've been so busy yeah so if you're one of those people that have sent us three emails it's just we are so far we're behind right our now. Best. we're doing our best but we can only do what we can do by ourselves right um but uh just hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people that have offered some type. One of the things that really moved our hearts as we were heading from Colorado here, as we're reading as many of these emails as we possibly could, was we had nurses, we had doctors, we had engineers, we had, I mean, every single thing that you can imagine. We, I, they were people that, that wanted to help when we saw our, a community that was starting to come together. Yeah. And that's what we're most excited about this whole Thunder Canyon and the RV Odd Squad memberships. All right, Sharon, where's your favorite RV camp spot in Texas? Okay, I, I'm anxious about this one. This was one of the most podunk looking parks that people would drive by and think, oh, this is, you know, you know, not pretty. And It looked like a hole. It did, but you know what? I loved it there. It was the like- people were so kind. They were so amazing. And I think kind people, there's something about work, the working man, you know what I mean? Yep. Like worker bees. We pulled in there, and it was probably the probably the shoddiest looking park we'd ever pulled in. And we're like, "Oh my God, we're going to be here for a week." And, and the, we we actually favorite. were giving people hugs when we left. It was one of our favorites. Again, you take you wherever you go. We were in a good mindset back then. Yeah. Um, and you also attract what you are. Yeah, and what you're looking at. Yeah, and we're other. focused so much on helping everybody we come into contact with that we're getting it right back. Yep. We're getting our cups running over. The, the, the love is pouring in on us. And yeah. so Uncle Eddie, uh, Aaron says Uncle Eddie lives there. Yes, we visited Uncle Eddie <laughs> and we had a blast. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, and thank you for, for reposting this question. Have you had any paranormal encounters? With Sasquatches or U.S. Boats? We, we've been told we have. Um, the rocks. Yeah, when we got attacked in, in back in Yosemite, when we had first given up our location, we did our 911 video where somebody was messing with us, threw some boulders up on the roof. We thought somebody was on the roof, scared the living daylights out of us. What we didn't share in that video is, is that the same time that happened, they killed our power from outside. Um, so that was a very scary experience. But I would say about 10 to 15 percent of the people um, told us it was a Sasquatch, and we're actually hoping it was a Sasquatch. I'd rather believe it was a Sasquatch. Yeah, than, than a human jerk. being that would scare a family like they did, because yeah. they scared the living daylights out of us. Yeah, uh, welcome, big truck, big RV. Hey, big truck, big RV. It's uh, it's rare that a that a big YouTube channel likes us, so thank you for <laughs> liking us. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> um, great question. Have you? Oh wait, no, this is the question. The weather. What's the weather like this time of year? We're melting down here in it's Southern hot. Alabama. It's hot. Yeah. We're melting down here too. In Northern Alabama, <laughs> yeah. But here's the thing that it's cool because remember, guys, while Sage, um, when Sage was um, was diagnosed with autism, we were we were stuck in Florida for nine months while we got her therapy four days a week, and we went through summers in in Southern Florida. You don't know what hot is until you're in Southern Florida with that humidity. We actually acclimated to it. Yeah, you get used yeah, to it. Yeah, you know, I mean, we're all designed to acclimate to whatever, you yeah. know, with a good positive attitude and just stay busy. Yeah. Um, 
Uh, you, you can adjust to just about anything. Human beings are pretty amazing. Yeah, we'll, we'll adjust anything. Don, Don stop again. it. Stop sending us money. <laughs> <laughs> so um, it looks like Laura and Georgia. I'm melting here, too. Yeah, Hot. this is just a heat wave. It's just complete insanity. Yeah. Um, what's the name of the park in Texas? Ah, it was oh. like sun, Sunrise RV Park? Yeah, Sunrise RV Park. Was it far. Sunrise or Sunset? No, it was no, Sunset. It, it was was it? It was either Sunset. sunset it was in Sunset. What Texas. was the name of? It was Sunset Texas. It was in Sunset, sunset Texas. Texas. Yeah. And it was the people were amazing. And remember, guys, Sunset Texas. That's when we started looking for campgrounds, mm -hmm. right? Remember, mm -hmm. we were going to Colorado to spend the summer with our families. Yep. But we started looking for RV parks. Well, we were looking for raw land, and then we started looking for RV parks. And, uh, and then, you know, God went ahead and dropped this whole thing in, in our heart. And then two weeks later, we, <laughs> yeah. we were in Alabama. Yeah. And um, it's unfolding. And it's it's unfolding pretty cool right now. So a question here that somebody wrote in the comments earlier, realizing that you have your hands full. This is Jim, uh, Jim G. I'm hoping that a division of the RV Odd Squad that specializes for those who are not full timers need advice, instruction regarding on how to hit the road in an RV just for a week or a couple weeks, even a couple months, like a retirement uh, trip. Actually, that's something we're working on. Like there's so much land here that could you imagine if we had a newbie training center yeah. where we could be like, go newbie, go like a, like a boot camp, but we could be like, pick up the boot hose, yeah. Yeah. go up your tanks, yeah. you know, and time people and yeah. be like, you call yourself an RVer, yeah. you maggot. And to give you guys a heads up, we, we know that we, this whole thing, this whole RV park thing has been, it's, it's been the talk of the RV space. And we've got a lot of other YouTubers that are doing videos on us. And it's so fun to go read the comments Most of the, the negative people. And oh, they're just, they're, they're coming after us. It's never going to work. They're going to fall on their face. They're just begging for money. Mm -hmm. We'll give you guys a few ideas. Number one, the people that are helping us with this are RV Odd Squad members. Yeah. Number two, there's no debt. None. Yeah. None. We are going to open this park with, yeah. with zero debt service. Yeah. Okay. Um, number three. We got big ideas and yeah. plans. And the, the most important thing out of all of this is we feel that God's hand is in this. Yeah. We can't fail. We can't fail. We just got to keep doing what we're doing right in front of our faces. And it's just going to lay out the way it is. Since we left, we pray every single day and we pray before every video. Guide, Heavenly Father, guide us and direct us to do your will and help as many of your other kids as we possibly can. And all the people that we need come in at the right time. And, um, and so we always know that we're going to get what we need no matter what. All right. Uh, shout out to Mr. Jack's journey. Uh, hey, he's Mr. in charge Jack. of security here at Thunder <laughs> Canyon. Um, he is uh, as one of our first members to stay here, and he is a nut. Um, Scotty has a really funny. Will Scotty! John, will John be teaching how to tow a fifth wheel? Yes. Uh, hopefully not. Yeah. He's a horrible teacher. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> You know, when we first came in the RV space, we didn't know who Alan Warren was of RV Show USA until we were about three, four months in. We had made so many mistakes. And Alan used to say that RV education should be free, right? Yeah. Should always be free. And it's Mercedes and I have kind of, he's helped us a lot. There's been some people that are behind the scenes that have really helped us I blame grow. him for this. Yeah. <laughs> but we want to open an education center down here. You know, 35% of our audience does not RV. They hope to one day. Yeah. And those are the people that we want to try to help avoid the mistakes that we oh, made. Oh, yeah. Um, we, the RV lifestyle is amazing. We love the life, but it's not all roses and butterflies guys we just tell the truth about it it's just a different type of lifestyle we love it but not everybody does yeah and because we have a youtube channel we see people sell all this stuff buy an rv and then three months later heading back home because they didn't have a plan and they and sold. they thought they were just gonna you know jump on the road and make money and, and and it's some of the stories are horrible and these people have kids yeah you know um and so it you know again we do the best we can to give people the, the truth yeah like if you love someone what would you tell them yeah Amy, uh, thank you. Again, not expected, but definitely appreciate it. Thank you, Amy. We, we really appreciate that. Okay, Jake, I love this question. A good list of associations to join Harvest House KOA. The biggest thing I would say is look for associations that do two things. Number one, they provide a value. Like they actually do something that benefits your RVing experience. And number two, look to see who owns it. Like, are they owned by a conglomerate of a conglomerate of a conglomerate? Or are they owned by a family, you know, a family that, that still owns, like, the whole business, 
situation. Because what's happening is that the industry is getting gobbled up and you have people that are, you know how like Procter and Gamble sells Tide and Gain. So you think that you have a choice when you're picking laundry detergent, but you're, you're really supporting the same company. It's the same thing taking you from cradle to grave, like why Procter and Gamble sells Pampers and why they sell denture cream, right? They're trying to own your whole RVing experience. So what you want to do is you want to look for the small mom and pops. You want to look for the people that it's fine if they partner with other companies and if they like, um, like give other people's members benefits and cross, you know, benefit like that. But when they like start buying other things, that's when you got to wonder like who's really, who's really steering that ship and who's really calling the shots. Mm -hmm. I mean, guys, and all of us know America's a mess right now. It's crazy. It's, it's, it's so crazy what's going on. Everything's upside down. It is. And that's one of the things that got us to talk about the principles of the Boy Scouts and Judeo Christian values, right? And what we wanted to base this campground on. Yeah. And, you know, I, I believe, you know, that we can actually make a difference for positive and, 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 and that's what we hope every single day. Now we don't know. We want it. We want the RV odd squad to be a community for good mm-hmm. that can actually affect chain in change and watch out for other RVers. Yes. Yeah. All right. I got a, a funny here. Um, prepper one oh one. I came here for the channel, but stayed for the blue shirt. Powder donuts. Well, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm trying to diet. I'm really struggling. It's, <laughs> it's either like I only eat donuts or I only eat kale. I'm an, I'm an extremist either way. And then, He's not wearing his blue shirt, so thank you for hanging with us. Roll Tide. Um, crazy Rider. Hey, I'm outside and knocking on your door. Wait, whoops, wrong trailer. <laughs> I really hope you're joking. <laughs> well, yeah. I appreciate that, though. Thank you so much. And thank you. Yeah. Laura and Georgia, stop it. I was missing that call from my bank. Not much, uh, but I hope. God bless. Laura, thank you for the support. You know, again, not expected, but certainly appreciated. Yep. Um, I have some more questions here from the people that came in early. Um, uh, Adriana Seuss, a very active member of the RV yeah, Odd Squad. Our Canadian RV Odd Squad member. Yeah, captain of the Canadian. Uh, <laughs> um, I heard that Thunder Canyon has a pool. Um, are you going to try to repair the pool or put in a new pool? Mm-hmm. The pool is a big deal with the locals. Apparently, everyone in the community remembers swimming in the pool yeah this was a big deal to the eider community mm-hmm. back in the day and most of the people that live here in the 50s and 60s remember this campground some of them were baptized in the canyon and some of the pools that are here guys if you've watched our videos you see some of the beautiful places this the thunder canyon has um but we haven't even showed you 10 percent of it yet um we've got some really cool stuff coming and we want thunder to canyon to be a place for everybody yeah we don't want to have anybody to have any blocks to come and visit and experience this mm-hmm. and that's why we're going to have a little bit of everything we want this this is 226 acres you guys we could do a lot of we could do a lot here. with it primitive camping uh glampers we yeah. want a place for bands we can do fancy camping yeah there's so much we can do with this and we you know the goal the hope we are crazy enough to think we can make a difference in the entire um, RV space. We really think we can, and it starts here. Yeah, exactly. And that's why we're so grateful to you guys who supported us monetarily by yeah. buying the founders or you know, yeah. booking, pre-booking two weeks as an advisor. All that money is going into the campground and building the RV squad community. But I think it should be said that even the, the free members are helping us a ton because it grows in numbers. Yes. So it's like the, the paid members help the non-paid members um, but then the non-paid members help the paid members. So it's like the yeah. power in numbers, I think is really where. Yeah. These are tough times right now. Everything's yeah. expensive. Right. And so pe- there's a lot of people that can't afford anything. You're still RV odd squad members, exactly. but those of us who blessed that want to support something that they believe in, we think that's what we're building here. So I love this name. One moral turpitude. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome um, to the least prestigious organization you could ever be a part of. No. Um, and, and crazy 55 writer. Thank you for the super sticker. Thank you. Not, not, not required very much. We appreciate the support. 
Um, will you be looking for one week of volunteers to help out in the next few months? Probably. Yeah, we need to organize that and, and really get it done in such a way that it's organized and really clear. Yeah. Um, because, you know, setting a lot of people loose with chainsaws is like probably not a really smart idea. Yeah, and this thing <laughs> is evolving, guys. There's insurance issues, big time insurance issues. And not everybody out there likes us. Mm -hmm. Um, people love us or they hate us. Yeah. Um, that's just the, the way other. it's usually one or the other. There's not too many people in the middle, but those who stick with us, we kind of grow on them, mm -hmm. you know? Um, but yeah, I mean, we'd love to call in volunteers. We, if we, we could probably have a thousand people here in a week. Yeah. Um, but we also know that that would be a nightmare. And then you've got that one jerk that would come in and fake a back injury or get hurt mm -hmm. or do something stupid. So that's one of the other reasons we really want to keep this as a membership. Um, members, we can know we can, we can trust. Yeah. You know, we know the good people. Yeah, because um, if if we're emailing you and we have that relationship and, and you're willing to get it, like to connect with us on email and and I mean that's that's different. Yeah, and that's why we're inviting um, uh, advisors to the park first. Yeah, you know they're going to get first. They, they, we, when you when you when you're an advisor, you're getting two weeks pre-booked at our, here at Thunder Canyon, which means you get to come and see it for yourself. And help us steer the direction of where we go. The sky's the limit. We don't know everything. This is just still unfolding. We're doing the next thing in front of us. Right now, it's just to get the doors open. Yeah. Another really good question, um, John. How do we take advantage of RV Odd Squad member discounts? This is a really big thing to us because when we we have to be really careful about which companies we work with, right? It better be really good because if we tell you to, you know, buy a chainsaw from a company that does poor chainsaws, that's a reflection on us. So we only can recommend what we have tried and, and we really trust, right? So when we work with a company, we always try to negotiate a discount for our people because it's really, really important that we give you not just like, hey, we like this, but hey, save on this. And so one of the places where we post that in um, our YouTube descriptions and our video descriptions, we'll post a lot of our discounts there. Um, we have discounts on the website, but I should probably send out an email this week talking about some of the discounts that we've negotiated and like send that to everybody. Yeah, but what's even better than that? What's even better than that? You, The way we've made money on our channel is by affiliate. So you use one of our links of the companies we tested, checked out, made sure it was a good product, good company. They take care of the customers. Those are the only products that we suggest. We probably do less products than any other YouTube channel because there's not a lot of great products out there. The ones that we suggest to you, if you have a problem with them, you let us know and We're we call, right, you're dealing with the whole <laughs> RV odd squad, right? Yeah. And so they take care of you really quick. Yeah. What's really cool about Thunder Canyon is now we are opening up a retail store here at Thunder Canyon, yeah. which means we are now being awarded distributorships by those companies that we've been an affiliate for. This is sick. so we're getting wholesale pricing on products now, and all those savings are going to our members, our paid members. So the ones that can't afford to become a member, they can still support us by watching our videos and using our links. And then those people that are willing to, you know, give us a get, join our membership for a year, they get products where we make no affiliate commission. We get them for wholesale. We give those guys to you, guys. It's four ninety seven for our founders level. Okay. And our, our goal is to give you triple the value of that founders level in the first year, triple. And um, we're going to get more into that. We want to under promise and over deliver. But by the end of the year, we really believe that people are going to be signing up for this like crazy because of the money that we can save you because of the community that we're building because of the health share that we're working on behind the scenes. This things we this things we just spent three thousand dollars two days ago signing up for something that's gonna remember those old coupon books you guys yeah you know the local restaurants buy one get one free we just signed a, we didn't even mention that we're giving this to you guys but we see it as a great a great product for our customers you'll be able to go to your phone and look around you see restaurants and stuff that are gonna you know buy one get one free and and those discounts along if you use it are gonna pay for the membership. We also have the Teladoc. That's included. We're paying for that for a year, you guys, a full year. And what's wonderful about that is you have your phone with you. You have access to a doctor. You have access to a counselor 24-7, 365. And so, you know, Mercedes and I have been building this for a whole year, a whole year. And when we got Thunder Cannon, it was at that point we said, let's launch it now. Let's launch it now.
This has never been about money for us, guys. This is a bit, at this point in my life, it's about legacy, building something special that my family can be proud of when I'm gone. Yeah. And, you know, Michael, Michael Miller. Wow. Yeah. Thank you very much. We appreciate um, it's really humbling, you know what I mean? Because we feel like we're on a mission and uh, we. We don't expect it, but we really appreciate it. Yeah, it is a mission. Hey, well, yeah, so I wanted to know if we can be a member, then later upgrade to a, uh, an advisor, it's called. Yeah. We've gotten that question a yeah. lot. And it, this is the simplest way to understand our memberships because we screw everything up, right? We make everything a little bit tricky. Everybody becomes an RV Odd Squad member for two weeks, right? I mean, excuse me, for a four ninety seven. That's a, That's a founder, right? And you get all our products and services that we'll put in these packages, become part of our community. We all save money that way. Just so you guys know, Mercedes and I paid for a membership. The upgrade to advisor is just your pre-booking two weeks at Thunder Canyon, and they don't even expire. Mm -hmm. They don't even expire. Yeah. Why? Because we want those members to come here, see what it is, and help us steer the direction of where we go. Yeah. Because the 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 this power and numbers guys we want this to be such a no-brainer we want to become the most powerful RVing community there is and you know and stop letting these co these corporations roll over us you know um i'm sorry sky blue do you know techno technomadia yeah so we've never like met in person but when we were new and trying to figure out like how to stay connected on the um, internet one of the things that i will say john joined their their thing yeah, yeah, MIA. MIA yeah, I spent ninety nine bucks to become a member of theirs for a year. The 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 um they do a great job at, at teaching you all about how to stay connected on the internet. Um, our relationship ended because they didn't give us any type of a coupon code that we could give to the RV Odd Squad. But they were responsive when we asked them for questions. Yeah, they were responsive to my questions, um, but they just never really offered us any type of anything for the. RV Odd Squad, we weren't even looking to make any money. No, we just wanted to. We just wanted, money. yeah, we just, you know, what's funny, guys, is we, we negotiate when we, these companies will give us, you know, how much do you want to make on it? And we say, how much can you give our people? Yeah. And that's where most of it goes. Um, do you have an estimated date when you may open just to be accurate by one, one or more year? Okay, so that's why we're doing this in phases, and that's why as we, like, get the phase one complete, we're doing board members first. Yeah, advisors. We've already yeah. got advisors visiting now. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. If you know we're open-minded, just know we're going to be busy. But we, we want our advisors to come in because our advisors are going to help us steer where we go with Thunder Canyon. It really helps. We can't us. do this by ourselves, you guys. No, and so the advisors are going to be the first people to come and even even camp here. This thing, the people that are that that are are pre-purchasing two weeks here at Thunder Canyon, those are the first people that are going to be visiting, and we're almost two hundred weeks booked already, guys. Pre booked. So to answer your question, we don't know yet. <laughs> to the public, it may be a while because yeah. it's going to be mostly RV Odd Squad members in here first. Mm -hmm. um, if I didn't pay for New Orleans and I'm a board member, can I still come during those times? We have to take care of the New Orleans people first because they were displaced. Some of those people don't have a place. Yeah, they to can't. They were spending but... thirty one hundred dollars to hang out with us for a week, and we're going to make sure that they're made whole. So that's why we're hesitant. But obviously, the next. The next um, people that we would open it up to would be board members after that. That's, yeah. You know what I mean? Because obviously we have to take care of the people that were, that were like, kind of, I don't want to say harmed, but they kind of they were, were harmed. Them. Yeah. You know, so we have to take care of them first and make sure we have enough for their electric and water and, and dumpy needs first. Right. And then we can open it up further if we have the room. Yeah. And that's the hope, right? Yeah. Um, but Renee, if you boondock, <laughs> probably. Yeah probably um, yeah that's another thing too boondocking versus yeah some people need hookups because like that you know they have a cpap machine or whatnot then, right. then you're going to need hookups and so right. that's what we're trying to navigate yeah so we're using what we what we have we've got a dump station here right now that's fully operational um we've got 15 sites that are 30 or 50 amp right now um, but we got to tear all that apart and run all new 50 amp to that section of the park we've got a solid plan we've got a solid team We've got a couple of really good contractors and this thing's going to be successful. It's just the timeline's going to be tricky because one of the biggest things we're struggling right now is sourcing materials. Oh, yeah. Materials have gone insane in this country. Hey, everything is doing? going up in price and there's a shortage of everything, you guys. All right. I'm, I'm getting behind, so we okay. got to be a little more uh, concise. Linda Cherry. 
Thank you so much. Uh, your enthusiasm for life and adventure is infectious. I, that's John, basically. That's totally John because he is just like. I'm passionate both he's, ways. Yeah, he's so passionate. Um, Don. Don, get out of here. 101. Yeah, and he wrote, keeping up with the Joneses. Um, that is so. Thank you so much. Um, and then uh, the artsy nurse. Uh, welcome again to the least prestigious organization you could, you could choose to be a part of. Yeah. We, we really we love it. our people, guys. Like we said, we're paid members in this whole thing. It's not about us. We Our success, we want the whole community to have that success. We want to share it. Yeah. We consider ourselves so blessed. When we started full-time RVing and we started a YouTube channel, we just wanted to make a few extra bucks. And now it's turned into this. And after the Palouse and meeting everybody, we fell in love with you guys. And now we want to build it bigger. All right. Dakota92, newbie to your channel. I keep hearing on how expensive RVs are. I'm a senior on fixed income. I'm considering a van or an RV. Any advice, thanks, guys. My biggest advice would be make sure that you have a solid plan on a budget. So if you have a fixed income, the benefit is that you do know, like, okay, I make X amount per month. I can count on X amount per month. But one of the biggest uh, myths is that RVing is going to be cheap. Maybe in the past, RVing could be cheap, but the reality is it can be really expensive. It can be really inexpensive. It really depends on your RVing style. Do you have hookups all the time? Where are you staying? Those types of things are going to determine your budget. Yep. And I guess the only thing that I would add to that is um, if I would rent. If you really want to truly try this lifestyle before you spend 50, 60, 100, $100,000. Assuming you're buying a yeah, new RV. Yeah, get a van and see, you know, if you can live in that tight of quarters, if that's yeah. comfortable for you. Test it you know, out. Do you have a pet? Do they, will they be okay in it? Exactly. Um, would uh, forming a small task force to organize and develop a plan in the early stages? Yeah, that's something. That's the advisors. Doing. That's yeah. what we're doing with the advisors, the people that we're texting every mm -hmm. day now, you know, or every, every couple of days. We're gonna do. We're gonna be doing Zoom calls with them and just click, letting them in on where we're at and what we're doing. Um, and they're gonna help us. You know, hopefully they're gonna help us so that we can scale bigger. Obviously, there's more, a lot more people helping than just me and Mercedes is gonna be helpful. All right. Um, can you buy the TST system with the six tire monitors, or do you have to purchase the two separate? We can get you six, eight, ten, or twelve. Yeah. And so, well, uh, not. I don't think they do a twelve. Well, it, so we we just we just got um, a distributorship with TST now. They're going to be stocking our store. We love the TST system. It's the best TPMS in the system. Uh, so those of you who are founders or um, uh, advisors, again, the difference is it's four ninety five. But you're with the other with the advisor membership. You just buy in two weeks the Thunder Canyon and help us steer the direction of it. All those people are getting those products at wholesale, and I do know they have a six, eight, ten, and twelve system. If you can only get four, then you're gonna to have to buy two extras from their site. But we save our all RV Odd Squad members get 15% off TST products on their website. Yeah, just use the code. Yeah, just use that code. Um, are all the van spaces going to be down by the river? I'm yes. hoping. Yes. You okay. guys, wait till you see. The... It's a nice river, though. Oh, to be man. fair, this is like a better river than the Saturday Night Live river. Okay. In a van down by the river. Exactly. Um, crazy 55 rider. Hey, John, I'm a trucker. Are you? And if so, where did you work? No, he should have been a trucker though. Because <laughs> I, he definitely. I sometimes talk like a trucker, but. Yeah. He talks like a trucker. No, that's a sailor, baby. That's a sailor. Is that what it is? <laughs> yeah. Or a construction guy. Yeah. I, it's Don, I can't believe you, man. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for your support, Don. All right. Um, if you guys, if we have not answered your question, can you duplicate it in caps? Because I'm trying my best to kind of dig through. So if you guys are wondering what Sage is doing, her toys change colors if you put them in ice water. So that's, <laughs> yeah. that's, that's what it is. All right. Van Life Voyages. That's us in a van down by the river. Yeah. yeah I really like their channel because they, they definitely do things, um, with, with ADA in mind. Oh my goodness. Oh, be careful. You want some she help? Has a full you got thing it. Don't spill it. Ice water and she's rocking like this. Yeah. She's so special. Sage is unbelievable, you guys. Um, really important question. I don't have an RV yet. Can I still become a member or a founder? We just got an email that was so touching from somebody that became a founder 
that said, um, you know, I don't RV yet, but if there's anyone in need, can you give them my night? The guy donated yeah, his night like, to a member that is that, and that's what we're hoping to do. Yeah. We're actually we've already given one membership away, you guys. Um, anybody that's on our social media on MeWe, people that help other people are the people we want to help, mm -hmm. and it's just the way it is. And so, you know, uh, it just just do everything you can to help another person, and you'll you'll get special perks. Exactly. Uh, another question that we had from our people that submitted questions ahead of time was, uh, can you give tips on organizing our stuff, downsizing and setting priorities? Can I tell you a secret? The videos that we've done on downsizing and organizing, y'all don't seem to like our videos on that topic as much. But what I can tell you, hey, honey, you got to stop playing with the spices. Hey, yeah, no more spices. Yeah, no more spices. Okay. No, no. no more. A bag? No bag. No you bag. Want me here. Um, so we have a couple videos on downsizing that kind of give the steps that we took when deciding to RV full time, because it was a process, you know, it wasn't like all of a sudden one day we decided to Marie Kondo it and we just throw away everything and feel good about that. It was a process letting go of stuff. It was a process figuring out what things could we sell? What things do, do we want to keep? What things did we need some time? I think I think she needs a minute. Yeah. What do you think? So that's definitely something that um, that we need to. Do, uh, we also have a video that shares the steps that we took to become a full time RVer, and it's ironic because you guys don't really like that video, but it's definitely one that uh, that I thought had like the best information. Gary, open year round. Yes, that is definitely our intention to be open year round. It does snow up here. We right. are in some elevation, but it doesn't stick. So you do have to make sure your pipes don't freeze, but it's not something that you'll worry about every single day in winter, like in other places. Um, next question. Um, do y'all have a plot plan for how many spots? Nope. Um, we're we're still working on that um I, a lot of you have been asking about purchasing a spot we we need to first make sure that we uh take care of the infrastructure and and you know we're not ready for that um our overlander or van dwellers welcome yes. um definitely and that's one of the things that we were thinking about there's a lot of land here that is completely primitive, primitive. it's completely unfinished raw land and so if we could open up trails, I'm not sure if they would be Jeep trails, if they would be bike trails, side-by-side side. Side by side trails. I mean, there are some gnarly fun trails. 8.1 8 miles. 8.1 miles. Um, <laughs> I don't know if you guys can hear John in the background. He's like <laughs> chiming in. But I actually really like this because he's filling in the blanks in my brain. So that's why we're such a good team. Uh, how's the cell service there, Andy and Kim? Andy and Kim, you guys have asked a lot of questions, and I don't know if I've gotten to them. It's so, awesome. Um, the AT cell service is really, really good. AT and T works really well. There's Verizon's a, better. There's a AT and T tower close by, but ironically, Verizon's actually better. So don't ask me how that one works. Um, Carla, keep up the great work. Carla, thank you for the encouragement thank because the reality is us. is but that no. it's a minute by minute kind of ordeal. All right. Quick reminder, please post your questions in all caps. If we did not get to your questions, please don't hesitate to put them up again. We're trying, but it's like when you're reading up here and reading down here, it's like reading a book out of order. And so we, if we missed you, it wasn't intentional. Please don't hesitate to put them. Um, RV America says, yes, we can hear him. So there you go, John. I think we figured out a way to like, because <laughs> he just got so excited during this live. Live stream and I'm like, I can't. And he's on a roll, you know. Um, so that was that was pretty funny. Now I have a couple of other questions from people that asked questions a little bit early. Um, Robert said uh, there will always be newbies. Could you make a library of videos just for the newbies? Well, that's yes. one of the things that we're doing with our RV newbie classes is that we have these live streams once a month, and sometimes we'll cover like three different lessons and we'll have printouts and you can fill in the blanks, etc. Well, we want to have like a digital classroom where you can um, just tackle one thing at a time. So like it's literally more like a classroom and maybe repurpose these lives or maybe shoot, shoot them again after 
because you know once you've done a video you look back and say oh i wish i had done this this would have been better i wish i could add that so we want to create a classroom for our viewers and uh and that's something that we definitely uh that we think there's a big need for that um aaron says i like this new format can you clarify if you like the q a more or if you are uh saying that you like the the rv newbie classes let me know please um what do you guys think of travel resorts of america i don't have experience with them so i don't want to misguide or give any you know I, I don't know what i think about them um i i know i'm praying for y'all all the details y'all are going through uh prayers thank you so much um you have no idea how much the prayers are appreciated all right so truly saved says you guys are awesome really encourages me to explore are you opening up more parks in the future hope so. that is absolutely our hope my ideal would be to have a park in all different areas of the country because one of the things that's you realize is that like when you're in the west side of the country there's a different type of beauty than on the east of the mississippi and i don't think that you can say one is better than the other it just depends on where you're at at the moment yeah we're just crazy enough to think that we could actually make that much change yeah and we don't like where not only the country's heading right now we don't like where the camp the rv industry is going right now mm -hmm. um it it just it's getting more like monetized parking lots and the corporations are taking control of it. It's not like old time camping. And so we're hoping and we're trusting that we're going to get everything we need from God to make this a model. Mm -hmm. And that's why we, that's where we need your help mm -hmm. and your input. And hopefully we'll build a team that will get bigger and bigger and bigger. And so that we can help support the small mom and pops guys as best you can try to try to support the small guys. Um, go to the smaller campgrounds instead of the corporate campgrounds if you possibly can. Um, and um, because they're getting bought up and bought up and bought up. Yeah. This is a really good question. How do you dispose of trash when you're boondocking? We don't really boondock too much. Um, we're more like rest stop boondockers. When we're going through large sections of the country, we'll just, you know, stay at truck stops for the night to like get across as quickly as possible. Yeah. And trash is a big deal. You really have to be conscientious of it. Um, but those people that like boondock for two weeks straight, I cannot imagine because you can't, you can't just leave your trash out. Animals will get to yeah, it. Yeah. They, 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 we heard that people typically use thicker bags, tie it up tight and either, um, put it in this, the people we followed early on, they put it in the shower, which I would not recommend. They Don't stacked it up in the shower. Yeah. That's, I wouldn't do that, but you know, it's, it's obviously an issue. Yeah. I would, I would get a bin for sure. Um, because they had a, just the bags in the shower. Um, first thought on pets. We actually do have a video on pets in an RV. I think they're good for security purposes. Um, I saw another question about pets um, in the campground. It's kind of tricky because here in this part of the country, people aren't like super leashy with their animals. But we're obviously going to have to be as more and more people. Yeah, Skippy has never been happier than he is right now, guys. He's got 226 acres to run around and he's yeah. got a couple of ponds. He's got a huge, um, uh, two creeks that run about a mile and a half. He's enjoying um, life. He's loving it here. Yeah. All right. Are you going to have a website for the campground um, for booking media? Yes, we yeah. definitely, we already bought the website, but we just haven't put anything on yeah, it we've yet. Already, yeah, the website's already tied up. we got the domain. We're going to need to build a brand new website, not only for Thunder Canyon Campground, but also for the RVOddsquad.com. You know, we purchased that one as well. And so when we say we're going big, we really, really mean it. Everything is going right back into this mission um, to, 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 to help as many as we can. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, John, if you need a great handyman, I can bring my own tools down. See, this is the type of, of comments that just really opens our hearts because yeah. we know that they're very sincere. Like yeah, you yeah. are really willing to come down here and help us with no expectation of anything in return. Right. And we made you a bench. Let us get our the lawyers and the 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 the, the insurance, insurance and yeah. all of that is in the works. We gotta know where we're safe. We gotta protect the property. Yeah, like another comment from um specialist do you guys need labor help uh willing to work <laughs> this is the stuff that like really puts it into perspective and, and just it humbles us we yep. feel so lucky yeah and we wish we lived in a world where we could say come on down guys we'll do this together the problem is is lawsuits and people getting hurt and mm -hmm. too many people with chainsaws 
thing, by the way, with the chainsaw thing. I was thing. serious. I yeah, she was, pro- yeah, she was serious. But, but anyways, yeah, um, it's just not the world we live in. And so we've got to be very responsible with the decisions we make and the people we invite in. Like I said, some people like us, some people don't. Mm-hmm. We got to watch out for those people that don't. Yeah. Um, did the purchase, did the park close? I don't see it posted in the DeKalb County website. Um, give it a week. Oh, no, but they don't, you, you'll, you'll never know. Yeah, you'll never you'll know. You'll never know. If I bought some land, do you think I could franchise? See, this is something that we definitely want to do, like RV Odd Squad Parks, but not necessarily that, like, I want to own all the parks in the in the world, but this idea that, like, if you go to an RV Odd Squad Park, you know what you're getting. Yeah, it's member-owned. Yeah. So, you know, it's not, not all the profits. It's not only, only about profits. Mm-hmm. Everybody shares in the success, mm-hmm. and that's what we're hoping this is going to be. It's about having a camping leaving a legacy for your family and your grandchildren of what camping used to be like. Right. Exactly. And that's what we're trying to do. Exactly. And then, uh, um, is there a nearby school for Sage? Um, is there a hospital close by? So the medical is, is a little bit of an issue because, um, the ambulance is controlled by the County, not the city. Um, so I don't know how close we are to a hospital. We're 35 minutes away from a hospital. Okay. hospital yeah. So- Chattanooga is 45 minutes away. Yeah, so we're like far enough away from the big stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I kind of like that. If there was an emergency, it would probably need a helicopter. Yeah. You know. Um, as far as Sage goes, luckily with like tele with telecommunications, we're getting a lot of help that Sage way. Sage will her. never go to public schools, guys, ever. And if we if she ever. did, it would be in a small place like yeah. This. And we're hoping that you know um, we Mercedes and I don't plan on living here in Alabama, guys. We want to. Take the time, hopefully six months, put this thing together, and then go look for something else. Just just ask to be guided in what's the ne- what's the next thing God wants us to do. Um, it's how we go every single day. Um, and uh, but we're hoping that maybe some families can come in here with kids Sage's age. Um, yeah. But the churches have had kids her age, you know, which has been great. And we got there twice already this week, and we plan on going back tomorrow. Mm-hmm. All right, um, support the small business. The only way to win big in this well. You just got to support the small business. Yeah. Um, I heard the government's planning another lockdown. We'll see. I mean, we'll, we'll see. We'll you guys don't want to get me started. Yeah. Don't, don't please. Let's, um, okay. Let's talk about yeah. because I just can't, I yeah. have to have hope. Um, baby girl always wants to participate. Everyone give a shout out to Sage. <laughs> Sage is a rock star. You guys, Yeah. We, you know, Hey, remember guys, Sage was nonverbal. Yeah. Until we let you guys know what was going on. It was a Christmas Mm -hmm. about a year and a half ago. And the prayers started flooding in. The love, the support. Sage talks up a storm now. Mm -hmm. You know, we we credit everything. that We we believe that there's so much prayer and love for us out there that we don't have to worry about too much. Just do do the next right thing. That's it. Yeah. Another question I have from some of the early questions is, would you, um, I would like to know about preventative maintenance. For example, I hear from someone at Cummings about generators or Ford uh, about the chassis, an expert about the roof sealants, et cetera. Um, so we don't pay for work that really didn't need to be done. That's a really good point because it's, it's a never ending spiral of stuff to work on, on the RV. It's like a boat basically. But, uh, but maintenance, I think, is something that having been in the RV now for a couple of years, we could definitely You uh, better learn dive. how to do the stuff. That's that's the best I tell anybody. If you're not a good handyman or you're not good with tools, you better get good at it or learn how to do it. RVs break. Yep. All of them. They're, they really, truly are like boats. You're always having something to fix on them. So, um, you know, or find somebody that has integrity that works on them, which is pro- that's tough in itself. All right. Um, are the prices for RV still in high demand? Yeah, exceedingly in high demand, yeah. which is it's getting to the point now where because of the supply chain issues, um, uh, dealerships will not guarantee a price um, because the manufacturers are saying the price is going to be the Could price. Go up. Yeah. And I get it because, you know, maybe they sell an RV today that they're going to build next week. But next week, lumber costs 10 percent more than it did before. That could be the difference between being profitable or not being profitable. So I, I, I understand why they did it that way. It's just, you know, everything's in high demand, guys. Yep. Inflation is insane. Yeah, it is. The dollar is just getting destroyed. Oh, uh, Kathy Taylor. Hi, Sage. You're so adorable and well loved. <laughs> oh. Uh, more color changing toys for Sage. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Darren. Yeah, she, she loves those. Yeah, after today's uh, after today's 
but she loves these things called LOL surprises. And John always gets that. He's like, oh, it's just two dollars of plastic. Oh, it's funny. They're like a hundred dollars for just this thing of plastic pieces, but she absolutely loves them. So of course she gets she gets quite a few of them. Mm -hmm. All right, let's do, are you ready for a last call? Yeah, I think so. Um, so last call for questions, please put them in all caps. Um, another really good comment, not so much a question, manufacturers are limited models also. Yeah, I mean, I think they have to because if they, if they saturate the market with a million units of a 2021 or a 2022, and then next year, 2023, things, you know, hit the fan. So I understand why they have to do that to keep, unit in quantities that they can really control and they also can't source enough parts mm -hmm. so i can see why they do that um let's see we are on duty as work campers so we have to pause the video yeah i <laughs> i hear you a lot of you are probably going to be joining yeah and eventually we need to find probably a family to manage this place for us when we start traveling again yeah because we yeah. do want to travel we love the rv lifestyle guys um we're into freedom independence and adventure because life is so short Right now, this is just what God put on our plate. Mm -hmm. This was not the plan. Yep. But now that we're in it, we're all in. We're 100% in. Mm -hmm. And, you know, with enough of you that believe in this and its mission, we're going to make this thing work. It it's, will. Yeah, we're all going to have a place to call home. Exactly. Mr. Jack, any internet recommendations for full-timers? Yes. Have have Verizon, and have at and Depends on how you travel. But if you're going to constantly be moving, have redundancy. Um, have additional antennas, a MIMO antenna for a Verizon hotspot. Mm -hmm. Probably one of the best investments we've made. We bought just about everything you can buy, and it is a video we're still working on. Um, and uh, and but uh, have Verizon, have AT and T, have in backup antennas, and pretty much redundancy. And you'll always have. There's only been one place we didn't have. We had zero internet. Yeah. In two and a half years. Um, well, you allow cargo trailer conversions. The only trick with the conversions, be it a van conversion, cargo trailers, whatnot, is the electric. So like, because, so, okay, the RV DA or things like stamps, the typical manufactured RV saying that the electric is okay and it's not gonna hurt the system, right? And yeah, how much of that is like really necessary or not? But you do have to be careful with conversions in that, you know, you are relying on someone's ability to do electric. Especially when you're in the not, woods. Yeah. And they may or may not have done electric well. Right. And so that's going to be a little bit of a tricky one is how do we how do we include as many people as possible, but not put our electric infrastructure at risk? Yeah. But again, hope so. I hope so. This yeah. park is big enough that we can have different sections for different folks, different strokes for different folks. That's our goal. Yeah, this is a question. Hey, are you saying we can become shareholders? I'm glad you asked this question because a lot of people, like when we say board, we're talking advisory board. We're yeah. talking about um, people that are the first to give us their, like our sounding board, our, um, uh, our think tank, that sort of thing. We're not talking like investments or anything like that at this time, if that changes, We'll let you know. Yeah. And the advisory board is going to help us shape what we do with this. Maybe we have a membership only place. Maybe the members can purchase shares. Um, and when they're not using their site, the park can manage their site, rent it out for them. We don't know. The sky's the limit. Again, this is one of the reasons we want the advisory board. They're also going to be the first people that are going to have access to the park before it even opens. Exactly. So we'll probably have a thousand RV Odd Squad members stay in this park before we even make it public. That'll give us plenty of time to test everything. Test yeah. the road. Guys, we got a lot going on. What's, yeah. what's cool is we do have a team um, that we got somebody working on reservation systems. We got somebody working on the store. We got some, there's a lot to do. And that's why we're going to, you know, when we go live next week, sometime we'll be talking to the advisory and founders and asking them who's willing to help us. Yes. Yeah. Um, what if each park had an RV repair shop? Yeah. You're reading our minds. Reading our minds. Great minds yeah. think alike. Yep. Pamela, new or used, it depends on you. How cool would it be to need some work done in your RV, right? Um, Full-time RVers, this is a big deal. You usually have to go to a hotel and you've got valuables in your RV. You don't want to drop it off for three or four days. Right now we have a, we need a new roof. Mm -hmm. This is our lives with us. Well, where do we stay? The closest place that will fix this is four hours away. Right. And so we don't want to drop off our RV and go back four days later. We've got so many valuables. Everything in our lives is here. So what if we had a park where you could stay in one of our cottages while your RV is fixed? Yeah. Okay. William, 
Can you have an aquarium in an RV? <laughs> sure, man, if you want to. I if mean, you don't like your fish, if you want to, like, traumatize them, you could. But we we, we brought fish from Colorado to Florida when we moved from Colorado to Florida. Our, our road trip. And yeah. those poor fish, it was not. But they made it. They did make it. I love it. fish, by the way. I, I love fish, too. And because I love fish, I wouldn't wish that upon them. Because the shaking does stress them out. Yeah. So it's not it's not the ideal. Okay. I like the idea of having a primitive area for RVs that want a boondock. Yeah. That's we're, yeah. We're looking into yurts too. Um, yeah. We've got all this beautiful space that's right around the canyon with these boulders that the size of houses with this green moss on them. You can't drive down. We're there. looking into zip lines, guys. Guys, yeah. you're talking about a canyon that's 125 feet He's deep. looking into zip lines. Yeah, where, I have no interest in I zip mean, lines. It's going to be, a, this is going to end up being a destination park, and it's also going to be a park where people come and get closer to the creator. Yeah, amen to that. Amen. So I think that that's a good place to end it, sweetheart. Is I there any good. closing thoughts? I think we're good. Yeah. Thank you so Thanks much, Thanks for spending everyone. the morning with us, guys. And I think we're going to continue these RV movie classes. Yes, a 45-foot fifth wheel will fit here, RC Nurse. Oh, yeah, it certainly will. Yeah, we've got, I mean, our sites, the ones we have right now in this portion, mm -hmm. you could have an 80-foot RV. Yeah. Yeah, and, and it. I mean, we're making these sites huge. And then uh, how far is Walmart? Maggie needs to know. What would you 25 say? 25 minutes. minutes? Yeah, yep. for pain. Perfect. All yep. right. Well, hey, guys, thank you so much. Thanks, Johnny Flynn. Yeah. We'll See you guys in, later. We'll be in touch. Bye, Bye. everyone.